Hey, and welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you another data structure. This one is called the list. Now, as you learned in the last episode, we can use a vector for an array that can change its size. We can add and remove elements to the end. However, if we want to remove elements from the beginning, we have to do this hacky thing where we copy the last element and and pop back the last element. So if you want to do that all the time, you're constantly going to be removing items from the middle and you care about the order, then instead of using a vector, I would say to go ahead and try to use a list instead. Now a list is a little bit more complicated. First let's go ahead and open up paint and I'll kind of show you uh, conceptually the difference between the two. So here's our vector slash array right here and as you can see it has four elements, A, B, C, and D, and they're all right next to each other. That's how vectors and arrays work. In RAM, the actual variables are right next to each other. We know for a fact that B is right next to A and C is right next to B. So the reason we can't just remove an ele element from the middle is because when we cut this out, C is no longer right next to A. It, it ruins it. What we would have to do is take these, copy them, and then paste them next to A to have a valid array, which is really ugly. Now you'll remember we did the trick where we took D, copied it, and pasted it over B, like this, and then we removed the last element with pop back. That is the trick I showed you in the last episode. Now as you can see, our elements are no longer in order. It's A, D, C instead of A, C, D. Now if you don't care about order, this is probably the fastest way to do this. This is probably a better choice than a list. But if you do care that they're out of order, then you're going to want to use a list. Now as you can see, list looks a lot more complicated. A, B, C, and D are not right next to each other. As you can see, I've got these dots here. That indicates that there's a bunch of stuff in between A and B in RAM, and in between B and C in RAM. They actually have these little arrows pointing to each other, which are called pointers, which we'll learn about later, that connect each of the different variables together. So if we want to remove the element B from the list, instead of doing all this weird copy stuff, all we do is remove B, and then we connect these arrows like this. So now A is connected to C is connected to D, and we didn't have to do that weird copy or anything, and it was a pretty fast operation. We just remove it and then uh, change the little connections here. So what we have here is this begin right here. This indicates the beginning, and then end indicates the end, and we're going to be using these to iterate through. Unfortunately, unlike a vector or an array, we can't use a for loop with uh, just an int i that loops through 0, 1, 2, 3. You can't access a list like that. But enough blabbering, let's go ahead and actually try to implement this thing. So let's open up tutorial videos. So here's our vector. Let's go ahead and remove the vector and instead make a list. So instead of include vector at the top, we're going to type include list. And this will give us access to the list class. Now like a vector, we initial we uh, create a list variable pretty much the same way. We type list and then we give it the type. We're going to say a list of strings and then I'll call it shop item names. Now this is going to initialize an empty list and just like a vector we can call pushback. So we could say shop item names dot push back and I'm going to push back gloves. Now we can also call push front. I can call shop item names names.push front push if I can type push front and we'll put axes so what push front does is instead of putting a variable back here like pushback does it puts a variable here on the front and there's also a pop back and a pop front if you want to remove elements from the front or back so what should we get here if we print it out we should get gloves after axes, right? Because we're pushing front with the axes and we're pushing back with the gloves. So it's like we add gloves and then we push to the front of it axes like that. So let's go ahead and try to print this. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Unfortunately, we can't do a four int i loop. We have to use something called an iterator. An iterator is a special variable that you used to iterate through a list. You use it instead of an integer i, basically. So all we have to do to get an iterator is we basically copy this right here, the type of uh, list we have. So we copy that, and then we type colon colon iterator, and then we give it a name. I always call mine it for iterator, or you could call it sit for shop iterator or something like that. I'm just going to call it it. So now when we want to do our for loop, we use this it variable right here. So we're going to say for it, 
equals, and we set it equal to a very a uh, function called shop item names dot begin like that, and this is going to set the iterator to point right here. See how I highlighted this begin in red? This is where the iterator is going to point. Then our condition is it is not equal to shop item names dot end. So we can't say like less than shop item names dot size. Instead, we say as long as it's not equal to end. And then what we're going to do is say the iterator starts here and it keeps jumping through these variables and it keeps going until it gets to the end and it stops. And luckily, all we have to do is say it plus plus at the end. And what that does is each time it gets incremented, what it does is it moves from the current uh, little node here, the current variable to the next one. So if this, uh, let's see, green not line is our iterator right here. In the first iteration, when we first start it, it's going to be pointing at A because we set it equal to begin. Then we might print out A or something. And then we're going to call it plus plus, so it points there. Then we're going to call it plus plus, points there, it plus plus, and then it plus plus. And once it's pointing to end, we know we're done. So let's go ahead and try printing it out. Oops, that's OBS. So to print it out, it's a little weird. What we do is we say C out, and we're going to say it dot. Uh, no, we don't. We say star it like that, and then end L. Now this star it means give me what it is referring to or what it is pointing to. So it is, for instance, pointing to this A. Whenever we say star it, it's going to print out whatever is in A. If it's pointing at B, star it is going to print out whatever is B. And I guess the proper name is not star, it's actually asterisk. So let's go ahead and see if this works. We should get, remember, axes and then gloves because we called push front after we called push back. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. I hope this is right. I haven't messed with lists in a while. There we go. Oh, let me run it again. So as you can see, we got axes and then gloves. So it's a lot weirder to use than a vector, because I know you're used to arrays, but it's not too hard to use, and with this, it's going to be much easier to remove items from the middle. So say we want to remove, actually, let's let's add some more stuff. Let's say, uh, let's push back some more things. We'll push back uh, kittens, and let's push back uh, axes. Oh, we already have axes. Swords. And one last thing, we'll push back cars for some reason. This is a sci-fi medieval game or something. So let's go ahead and print this out twice. And in between, let's remove one of the middle items. So if we want to remove, say, kittens, all we have to do is say shop item names dot remove. And then in here, we type what we want to remove. I'm going to say kittens like that. And that will remove the item kittens from our list. So let's see if that works. Oh, I redeclared it. That's right. You can't declare the same variable twice in a row, so I'm just going to delete this one. Now let's run it again. So we should get uh, let me actually separate these by a new line so it's more clear. There we go. Okay, let's run it. There we go. So as you can see, we got axes, gloves, kittens, swords, cars. And then the second time we printed everything out, kittens wasn't there. That removed the kittens variable. Much, much easier. There's another function called erase that will also remove a item from the actual list. Now what remove does is it removes it based on the string. What if we actually had kittens twice, which we can do. If we put kittens twice and we run it, what's going to happen is it's going to remove both occurrences of kittens, but perhaps we didn't want to remove both occurrences of kittens. What if we only wanted to remove one of the occurrences of kittens or something like that? Or, or what if we only want to remove every other kittens or something like that. Well, with that, what we want to use is probably uh, the erase function, not the remove function, and we'll actually do it ourselves with a for loop or something. So let's go ahead and, and use the erase function, and we'll do it when we are iterating through shop item names again. So what we're going to do is only remove the first occurrence of kittens. 
And the way we do that is first we use an if statement. What we're going to be doing is looping through the uh, actual shop and looking for kittens. So if star it, remember that's how you get the uh, variable that it's pointing to. If star it is equal to, and we're going to say kittens, then we are going to call the erase function. We just call shop item names, which is our list, dot erase, and we pass in the iterator. We pass it into that, and it will erase whatever the current iterator is pointing to. Now, if we want to keep looping, we have to actually set it equal to that. This shop item names dot erase returns a valid iterator. If we don't do this, then our, our iterator right here becomes invalid after we call shop item names dot erase. Now I'm not that actually doesn't matter right now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out of the for loop. Whenever you actually uh, want to exit a for loop early, you can call a function called break, or I guess this isn't a function can call the keyword break and what it will do is it will break out of the current for loop or any loop really a while loop a do loop it won't break out of an if statement but it will break out of the first and closing for loop so this will end the for loop what we also could do is just set it equal to shop item item names dot end like up here if for some reason you don't want to use the break if you set it equals shop item shop item names dot end then you're guaranteed that it's going to quit but we'll just call break and this should erase only one occurrence of kittens, and then we will be able to print everything out. So I actually have the order of these wrong. Let's put that right here. And let's do an end L. And now we should see that there's still one occurrence of kittens left in our list. And there we go, the last kittens is still there as we would expect. Now as you can see, when we want to remove a specific item, a lot of times we have to loop through the entire list, which is kind of slow. With a vector or an array, we could have just said if we wanted to remove uh, this shop item names kittens, we could have just done that trick where we remove the third item and we wouldn't even have to use a for loop. So really, a lot of times you're going to want to use a vector or an array instead of a list. A lot of people will use lists in their voxel games or things like that and it really, really slows things down. Like, you really should use a vector or an array if you can and only use a list if for some reason you can't really use a vector. For instance, if you need the data to be ordered or anything like that. So thanks for watching this episode. I hope you learned a little something. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to revisit our shop uh, little program and make it much better. We're going to use classes and vectors and make it so we can have multiple shops with all different items and things. It's going to be super cool. Thanks, guys.